Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here once again. Um, I think it's the first time I come to the English meeting on Sunday, but thank you and welcome everybody. So today um, we're going to present about study. What is study? What's the importance of study? And the quote by John on chapter 8, um, verse, verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that is and what does it mean in our daily lives. So the outline of our morning, we're going to talk first about what is it? What is study? What is truth? What is freedom? And then we're going to talk about why. Why do we need to study? Why is it so important? Why did Jesus say that if we know the truth and we follow his steps, how are we going to get that? And how do we get started? Or how do we continue? How do we pursue our studies? And then we're going to have a wrap up. Any questions if you guys have at the end. But feel free to ask questions if you guys have it as we go on um, through our morning as well. So. The verse from the New Testament, he said, so the, a little at the beginning, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So when Jesus said that, the Jews were a little confused. So they replied, we are Abraham's descendants and we had never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? They were a little confused, like, well, we haven't been slaves to anybody, so how are you going to set us free? Like, who are you to begin with? They didn't understand that Jesus wasn't talking about their physical bodies, like, and the history behind it. He was talking about their spirits. He was talking about their spiritual beings. So Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin, right? Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So, yeah, so like, you're right. You haven't been slaves like the way you're thinking about it, but we are all, as humans, slaves to our sins, slaves to our past, slaves to our mistakes. So unless we have been set free of those, we all need that freedom that Jesus, only Jesus could bring. So he was explaining to them, because he's the son, right, our guide, our master, he is the one who's going to set our spirits free for eternity. So this is what he was talking about, just to give us a little background when we look at the quote. But what is study? What is truth? And then what is freedom? Okay, the background picture, we see one caged bird, one bird being set free. So what is it that's going to take to get us to that point? How can we go ahead and be free from our sins? Okay, think about like we're caged, right? In a way, we have our physical body that cages our spirit for our period here on earth. But one day, right, we all know that that spirit will be set free. When we disincarnate, it's more free than it had been in the flesh. But one day we'll truly be free when we're free from everything, from our past, from our mistakes, when we're going towards our perfection and ev evolving each and every day. So what is 30? When we look at the definition from the dictionary, it's going to say that study is the pursuit of knowledge as by reading, observation, or research. To inquire into, to investigate, to give careful thought to something. So this is what they call study. They also had one definition that I didn't include because I don't think it's really appropriate to nowadays. He said that study was to memorize things. And in today's age, we know that that's not really required, right? We don't need to memorize facts anymore. We don't need to know information, little pieces of information. So we need to go a little beyond that. And um, just looking, I was looking at one of the news recently talking about, well, not so recent, but not too long ago, about the Google Glass. I don't know if some of you guys saw it on the news. So it's basically like some goggles that you wear, has a little camera, and you ask the goggles, so like Google, search this. Google, what is this? Google, record. And you're wearing those goggles. So as if there's a little computer right in front of your eyes, the computer sees everything you see, the computer hears your voice and attends your commands. So you see the answers right on that screen, on the glass. So definitely, we don't need to memorize anymore. Our, the kids nowadays, you know, the next generation, they can just ask, like you're wearing the glasses in front of you, what is this? Google that, and we'll do it for you. 
So memorization is not going to be part of study anymore. Information is rarely available already. We all have our cell phones like, oh, what is this? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's Google it, right? Even it became a verb. So study goes a little beyond that. And we know that ignorance is definitely not bliss, right? Knowledge is. So that pursuit of knowledge, not just through reading, and I'm a reading teacher, so that comes from a reading teacher. So not just reading will give you all the answers. You need to go beyond that. You need to actually live and experience and observe and be able to research. And that will be the true meaning of study that we're going to talk about this morning. Freedom. So what is freedom? Right? We have many types of freedom, many different types of freedom. We can talk about freedom of conscience. You can talk about freedom of expression, religious freedom, political freedom. A lot of these, well, mainly the last three, are part of the Bill of Rights in the United States, right? We have the First Amendment who gives us freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. If we didn't have those freedoms, we couldn't even be here today meeting. And in a lot of places around the world, they don't have that freedom. They don't have freedom of expression. A lot of places like Twitter, Facebook, those are all blocked. They don't have that freedom to express themselves. They don't have the freedom to search for information. Some of them don't even have political freedom, right? They're not part of the democratic system and they don't have the right to vote. So all of these freedoms, some of us will take it for granted that we always had them here in the United States, but that's not true for everywhere else around the world. Some of the places are gonna lack some of these. But the one type of freedom that no one can take, right? We're talking about the first one, the freedom of conscience. Because that goes beyond what governments, what the institutions can touch. They can't touch people's consciences. So those will be truly when we talk about freedom. But we can't forget that even though we might have all these freedoms, freedom comes with a prize in a way, right? It has something attached to it. So human beings, we're all given our free will. By God. Everyone has the free will to act, but they must answer to the consequences of their actions. So even though we're all free, we may do as we wish, there's always going to be a consequence. There's always going to be something that's going to come as a result, either a positive one or a negative one, but we can't escape that. That's part of the law. But when Jesus was talking about freedom, he wasn't just talking about the freedom of conscience, the freedom of religion. He wasn't talking about those freedoms necessarily. He was talking about the freedom of being free from sin, right? He talked about you'll be free from sin. So what is he talking about? He's talking about that once we're free, we'll be able to get rid of our prejudices, our superstitions, our pride, our vanity, hatred, greed, jealousy, envy, and the attachment to our vain, mundane traditions that we have in everyday lives. So that kind of freedom will really set us free, will set our spirits free. And once we can conquer, once we can achieve being free of these things, once we achieve those virtues, right, we call them, virtues will not be taken away. They will be with us forever. So once we're able to do that, it's ours. No one can touch it. No one can take it away. And that's the beauty of knowledge. That's the beauty of studying. Because once it's yours, it's yours forever. No one will take that. And when we think about freedom, a couple of questions come to mind, right? Are we really free? Is, that, is there such a thing as like total freedom? Even in today's society, we talked about how here in the United States, we have a lot of freedoms. But we can start talking about a little bit. I don't know if you can see it well from the back, but it's a law with the, um, the at symbol, right? When we talk about internet. Is the internet free? Are we free to browse the internet? Right? Are we free? Can we do anything we want? Not really, right? We know that now. Um, with all the scandals that have been in the media, if you've been following along with the NSA, the National Security Agency, and President Obama having to do a lot of diplomatic conversations with the other countries around the world since they leaked the information that the United States had been spying on other people's like intranet and like their searches and everything. We know that that's not really true. We're not really free. Depending on what you Google, depending on the type of information you browse, um, you're going to get a call. Someone's going to come visit you. They're going to want to find out what are you up to, right? What are you searching? All of this in the name of protect protecting the citizens, protecting our freedoms, right? So in a way, our freedoms have to be supervised so we can have freedom. So little questions there, right? You can agree to disagree or can have different opinions about that. But we know that's not really free, right? We don't have freedom to do as we wish. Also, freedom of speech. Looking at the first one. 
Are we free to say anything we want, really? Is that the right thing to do? Well, I want to say that. Should I say it, right? Sometimes the right thing to do is to not say anything at all, to keep it to yourself. Yeah, you may say it. No one is like prohibiting you from saying it, but is that the best course of action? And sometimes it won't be. So sometimes, and a lot of times, especially in our houses and our families, the best thing to do sometimes will be to just keep it quiet, to just zip it, don't say anything, because that's going to prevent other problems from coming. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of time, don't say anything, and the other person will realize their mistake. You don't need to be pointing it out every time. You don't need to be reminding people what to do every time of the day. So again, sometimes that will be the best use of our freedom, to not use it. We see the bird setting free, we can think about what are some of the things that imprison us? What are some of the things that we have through um, all of our incarnations cultivated? What are some of the vices? What are some of the sins, like Jesus talked about, that imprison us? We all have things that maybe we regret, things that um, we are constantly worried about. Worry could be one of those cages. You're never free from it. If you're always worrying, always anxious about the future, that's gonna cage you and it's not gonna let you be present. It's not gonna let you be free to be in the present moment. So all of those things, all of us are gonna have something that holds us back. That's not gonna let us truly go ahead and experience and live. And we can think about what is the key to unlock it all? What is the key that's gonna unlock all of our freedoms, our inner freedoms for our spirits, right? And that's what we're gonna talk about. Because once we're able to find that, we'll be able to truly be free. And that the wings of knowledge, the wings of our moral knowledge, our academic knowledge, our spiritual knowledge, really let us fly. Fly to higher realms, to better worlds, right? And we see that our planet is getting ready to fly as well, if you will. It's getting ready to evolve into a world of regeneration. We're getting ready for that. So all of us who are in the pursuit of knowledge, all of us who are in the pursuit of truth, will be able to one day achieve that freedom and move on forward. We also talk about freedom and the most um, invaluable of freedoms as we see in the Spiritist Prayer on chapter 12 of the Gospel According to Spiritism. The Spirits tell us that of all the freedoms that we talked about, of all the freedoms that exist, the one that cannot be touched, right, the one that's the most invaluable of all is the freedom of our thoughts which includes the freedom of conscience. So once we have that, we will really be free in that sense. And um, the phrase over here is in Portuguese, but the translation would be, if we're free on the inside over here, nothing is going to imprison us on the outside. And this is what the quote is saying. So if we can be free, if our minds, our conscience can be free on the inside, nothing is ever gonna imprison us on the outside. And that's truly the type of freedom that we're talking about, that freedom of conscience, that our thoughts can go anywhere. Our thoughts can reach many people, many realms, if you will. Now that we talked about freedom, let's talk a little bit about something that's relevant, right? Coming up tomorrow, uh, Martin Luther King's Day. So one of the quotes in one of his sermons, this one particular, uh, was called, It's a Dark Day in Our Nation. He was speaking against um, the war in Vietnam. But it's very relevant when we talk about freedom and when we talk about truth. So part of his um, sermon said, rationalization and the incessant search for scapegoats are the psychological cataracts that blind us from our sins. So those two things, we keep rationalizing. What is it? You know, I'm not the one to blame. Someone else is to blame. Or we keep searching for scapegoat. Oh, it's not my fault. It's someone else's fault. Those are the things that are going to blind our eyes, right? Like the cataracts that we have to eliminate and take it away. So he says, he who lives with untruth lives in spiritual slavery. Freedom is still the bonus we receive for knowing the truth. So again, once we know the truth, that's going to be our freedom. Our freedom from not the kind of slavery that the Jews taught, that Jesus was talking about, but from our spiritual slavery. And a lot of us, we're going to be slaves to ourselves. Because if we're constantly finding, oh, someone else to blame, it's not my fault, it's someone mm -hmm. else's fault, we're constantly going to be slaves to that. We're constantly going to be looking for something outside when the true answer, when the truth is going to be in the inner self. 
So what is this truth that he's talking about? He's saying that freedom is going to be a bonus, right? Once you have the truth, then freedom will come. So what is this truth? So if we look in the dictionary again, truth is going to be a statement proven to be or accepted as true. Now, when we look at that definition, does this sound like absolute or kind of relative? Should be a little relative, right? Not everybody is going to agree when we talk about something that can be proven or something that can be accepted as true. And when we get to that part, what's accepted as true, that's when we're going to have some disagreements and we can already see that. So if I asked you guys today, was it cold outside, right? Do you guys think it was cold outside this morning? Some of you guys are going to say, yes, it was cold. Some of you guys, no, that's nothing. You know, it's perfectly warm. I was talking to a friend, um, she lives in Boston yesterday. And when I told her we had to turn the heater on in the house because it was like 50 degrees outside, she was like, you kidding me? The heater here, like it's 50 degrees. The heater is set to 50 degrees because it's like below 30 degrees outside. So again, that relative, right? When I told her it was cold here, she was like, that's nothing. It's not cold in Florida. Mm -hmm. If you think it's cold in Florida, come up here to Boston and you're going to really see what cold is all about. But again, we can see that the truth is going to be different. My understanding, my acceptance for what's cold here, it's going to be different than hers based on our experiences, based on what we have lived, based on what we know to be like our surroundings. So that can be a little bit different. So when we talk about truth, this definition doesn't give it all. It's missing a couple of the pieces. So it would be better if we talked about um, truth as in a continuum, if you will. Right? We're starting with that. So we can talk about four types of truth. We have our personal truths, our social truths, our human truths, and our universal truths. And those are going to be different. And we're going to use truth as a comparison to the light. So let's use the analogy that truth is like the light. So our personal truth, something that's true to us, will be like our little book lamp. Okay, when we're reading something and we need a little book lamp, that's the kind of truth we're talking about as personal. It's individual. No one else is going to share that light. It's for me. It serves for me. It's my purposes based on what I know, based on my experiences, based on my beliefs. So that's going to be the personal truth. Then we have the social truth. Okay, so we kind of like a lamp stamp that is going to illuminate, that's going to serve the purposes of a small room or a small group, if you will. So those are going to be some social truths. So groups of people, gatherings, they're going to come together, right, like-minded people, and they're going to share that social truth. And that's going to serve for that. It's going to illuminate a small portion of a room, a small portion of a house, and that group will understand that to be true. Okay, so again, you're going to see some um, groups in school and even in the school community, you see like the groups who like one certain thing, they're going to hang out together, the other group will have something else, and you're going to see differences happening. Um, and then we have human truth, okay, something that's going to be true for all human beings. So it's a bigger light that's going to illuminate a bigger space, if you will. And that's going to encompass all of us humans, all of us human beings. But again, that's not the truth that's going to serve for all spirits. We're talking about something that's true here on our planet, on Earth. So that's the kind of truth that's going to be true for us. It's not going to apply to everybody. And then we have the universal truth, which would be like the sun. This one serves for all. Not just us here on Earth, but for all the universe, for all spirits around the realms. And that universal truth is going to be God's laws. Those are unchangeable. They will never change. They have been set. God is perfect. God is good and just, and those laws are in place forever. They apply to all creation. And that's the kind of truth that Jesus was talking about. Once we can align our personal, our social, and our human understandings of the truth with God's laws, then we'll truly have that understanding of the truth he's talking about. Once we're in alignment, this, all of these will become one, because we're all going to be serving according to God's laws. And that's going to be the universal truth that's going to reign for all of people. So when we talk about truth, it helps you kind of put it in a little perspective. So Jesus said that um, he was, right? Jesus answered when he was asked like who he was and why he was here. I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he is the way. 
right? He is the truth. What does he mean by that? He is the truth. He lives in accordance to God's laws. He lives in accordance to that universal truth that we just talked about. So he is the way. He is the way that's going to lead us through that. So when we talk about, when we see all these truths, we see that some of the truths are going to be stagnant. They're going to be dogmatic. These are the social and the human truths we talked about. So we have some in the churches. We have some temporary truths in science until the next big thing comes up, right? So something's true until the next thing comes. We see some progressive truths in the philosophies and human thinking. Those are always changing as well. We have some very convenient truths in politics. It's true this election season. It's not true the next one. And we have some questionable truths at all, angles of our life. So for all of these different little truths we have, they're all changing. They're all volatile. And that's why the only one that's going to be really true is when we follow Jesus. When we're following his teachings, when we're following his way, that's going to be the truth that won't change. It hasn't changed for the past 2,000 years. It won't change in the next upcoming. We're just going to change the way we see it. Our understanding of it is going to get greater each time. So why study? Right? So we know a little bit about freedom. We talked a little bit about truth. So why should we study? Jesus on that initial quote, he said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. What does it mean to hold on to his teachings, right? That's where study is going to come in. If we don't know what his teachings are, we're not going to be his disciples, right? If we don't know who we're following, how can we explain it? How can we live something we don't know what it is? One quote from Buddha is going to um, help us understanding a little bit. So I'm going to read it. So Buddha said, do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in anything simply because it's spoken by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it's found written in your religious books. Do not believe in anything merely or on the authority of your teachers or and elders. Do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down for many generations. So he's saying, don't just believe because you heard someone say it. Don't just believe because you heard someone else, people were speaking about it. Don't believe because it's written in the book. Doesn't mean it's the truth. Don't believe it because your teachers and your elders are saying it. Don't believe in traditions because they've been passing down. So he's saying, don't believe in those things just because. So what? is what are we supposed to do that he says but after observation and analysis when you find that anything agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and all then accept it and live up to it so now buddha's invitation his um, calling is for us to do what we're going to observe we're going to analyze and we're going to reason doesn't that kind of sound like the definition we had for study? All right, so we're going to study it. That's, the, that's what he's saying. We're going to study. We're going to observe. We're going to analyze. We're going to think about it. We're going to reason. That's why we have reasoning, right? That's why God gave it to us, so we can think about it. If, agrees with, if it agrees with reason, and it's good for the benefit of one and all, so if it's good for everybody else, then we're going to accept it. And we're going to live up to it. And a lot of times, we stop here. We accept it. We accept it as truth. We studied it. We read it. It makes sense. But can we now take it to the next step? Can we now begin to live it? Can we begin to experience it in our daily lives? And that's what we're going to talk about when we talked about how can we make study more relevant to our lives. It's not enough to just know it. It's not enough to just accept it. We need to do a little bit more. So when Kardec and the Spiritists told us, right, Spiritists, love one another, make sure it's good for all, that's the first precept, that's the first law, the first command, if you will, the first principle. Educate yourselves is the second. We're going to seek that knowledge, we're going to pursue that knowledge. And within Christianity, you will find all the truths. So that's what the Spirits are telling us. So we're going to find all the truths we're seeking for within Christianity. Now, if we must love one another, and if we must educate ourselves, where are we going to get that information? Where are we going to get the source of all that, right? So we start here um, with our little puzzle, if you will. The truth has many different parts. 
And we start out with Moses, right, in the Old Testament. So Moses received God's laws. He gave us the Ten Commandments. He started saying, well, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that, trying to help us understand the principles and start beginning to live in accordance to God's laws. Then we have Jesus, the New Testament, that gave us another piece of the puzzle. Not just are you supposed to be following these laws, you're also supposed to be loving one another. And he gave us his example of love, of kindness, of charity to all. So he brought another piece of that puzzle in. And then we have um, the Spiritism with the Spirit's book and the codification that brings another piece to help us understand all these truths that Jesus was talking about. How are we gonna educate ourselves? We're gonna look at pieces of different things because we know that the essential character of a revelation, if we talk about the three revelations in Spiritism with Moses being the first one, Jesus being the second, and Spiritism the third, the commonality that they have, the thing that's common among all of them, it should be, and we see it in Genesis, is that the essential character of all revelation must be the truth. So we need to have the truth in all of them. To reveal a secret is to make known a fact. If the thing is false, it's not a fact, and consequently, not a revelation. So if these things were not true, if some piece of it wasn't true, then it wasn't gonna be a revelation at all. Because there's no such a thing as a revelation if it's bringing false information, if it's bringing something that's not true. So because all of these pieces are bringing us, us something new, a new piece of that puzzle, a new revelation, more facts, we can believe them to be true. And again, they haven't changed. And that's one of the characteristics of the truth and the revelation. They're not temporary. They're going to stay. They're going to be with us for longer. So we can see that. When we look at studying, right, and we talk about all the knowledge that's available to us, and we have, that's the source for our study. So if we're going to begin studying by reading, Upon other pieces, right? So we're going to start looking at the Old Testament. We have the five books for the Torah, and we have those. We have the New Testament, especially with uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Acts, those main books. And then we have the other books as well for the New Testament. And then we have the basic books in Spiritism as well. Okay, with the Spirit's book, the Genesis, the Gospel according to Spiritism, Heaven and Hell, and the Medium's book. And one thing that I don't think right, will be a coincidence is that they're all five, right? They're coming increments of five. So we have the five main books in the Old Testament, the five main books in the New Testament, and then the five main books in Spiritism with the basic books. They're not the only books. They're not all the source, but these are the main ones. When we talked about, like, these are the core of those revelations. So all three revelations have a core of five main books that we're looking for. And again, when we study those books, when we look at those things, that's where we're going to find that piece of the truth. That's where we're going to find the real understanding of those things. And what pertains to us mostly this morning is that it, the study of the works of Alain Kardec, they're going to be fundamental to help us achieve the true understanding of Spiritism. The other books, the other truths, they have been around for long time periods of time right and when we talk about spiritism it's recently new it's a recently like it's a new revelation if you will if you're comparing 150 200 years to 2000 right so it's a more recent one and that's why the study of the works are so important it's not something that has been ingrained in us for as long as the other ones have and we really need to focus on studying those so spiritism needs to be right we're going to study it, we're going to analyze it, and we're going to practice. Those are going to be the keys. But we're not just going to practice it here on the Spiritist Center, right? Because that wouldn't be enough. We're going to look and we're going to take Spiritism to all realms, to all fundamental aspects of our life. We're going to take a look at it in the scientific realm, the philosophical, the religious, religious, the ethical, the moral, the educational, and the social aspects. So that truth, if it's going to be true here, it's going to be true everywhere else. And that's going to be one of the characteristics. It can't be something that only works here. Oh, I can only talk about it. it's only true if we talk about it in the Spiritist Center. That's not how it's going to be. It needs to be true everywhere else we go. So it's something that's going to be with us as we go along. So that's going to be the truth if we're going to be known as Christ's disciples, disciples as Jesus' disciples. 
um, we're going to be practicing, we're going to be looking at all those things everywhere we go in our lives. So how can we study to learn the truth and really be free? So how can we do that? And that's what we're going to talk about as the next part. So um, before we can study, we need to overcome a couple of barriers that we all have at one point or another in our lives. So some of us, or we might know somebody who has these, doesn't mean we do. Um, we're gonna hear, oh, I don't need it. That could be one comment. Um, I don't have the time and I'll start tomorrow. And when we talk about study, some of those are the common, we won't say excuses, right? Because they might be true. Um, but those are some of the barriers we need to overcome. And again, as a teacher, I hear them all. Some kids are like, oh, where's your homework? Uh, don't need to do it. I know it all. Right, I'll pass the test. I uh, don't have the time. Don't have the time to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it tomorrow. Right, so again, Monday comes, homework is always due on a Monday, and I hear all of those. Like, uh, no, don't need to do it. I already know it. Don't have the time. Right, well, I haven't heard the dog ate my homework, but the other day I heard the flood. My homework got caught up in the flood and it got wet, so I couldn't bring it. So I was like, okay, fine. Palm Beach did flood. Uh, last week, so I'll take that. And I'm always like, oh, I'll do it next time. I'll bring it tomorrow. So those are all common barriers that we need to overcome when we talk about studying. So let's talk about the first one. I don't need it. Right? When we talk, oh, I don't need to study. Um, some people are going to say, well, I know it all. Right? I don't need to do it. That's going to be like, we're going to call them like the cup full. Right? If the cup is full, you can't put any more information in. Oh, I can just Google it. I'll just look it up some other day. I don't have time for it. If the cup is full, we can't put any more information in. If we know it all, if we're too proud to even admit that we might not know it all, if we might have some questions, then why bother, right? Why are we going to learn something if we don't feel the need to it? If, oh, I know everything I need to know, life is just fine the way it is, then we can't put any more in. Our cup is full. Our minds are full. Nothing's gonna, the cup is gonna overflow and all the information is gonna go above our heads. So that's not gonna be the answer. Now, if we think about it that, you know, we know it all, the spirits already tell us that we don't, right? A lot of times they're like, they'll give an answer and they will like, well, this is as far as you guys can know now and understand. We're gonna save the rest for later because it's gonna be beyond, right? When we talk about the light, that if the light is too strong, it's gonna blind us, those truths. We're not ready for all of it yet. And we know, from Socrates, right? If Socrates had the humility to admit that says, um, as for me, all I know is that I know nothing. Right? Something that we can aspire to, right? One day be able to say that. All I know is that I know nothing. There are more truths in the universe, and I only know a little piece of it. If we looked at his cup, his cup would be like pretty much empty. Because there's always going to be more room, more space for the information to be filled. Because if he didn't know it all, he just knew the questions, right? What questions to ask. So he always had the right questions. So if we have the mentality of pursuing knowledge, of asking questions, we're going to get closer and closer to knowing and to knowing when we don't know, which is an important thing too. Our knowledge is going to be finite. We need to know, like, my knowledge comes up to this limit. Now it's on to somebody else to share with that piece. True wisdom is going to come to each of us when we realize how little we understand about life, how little we understand about ourselves, and how little we understand about the world around us. If we can't stop to think about, okay, I really don't know, and sometimes like, oh, I know what that person was thinking, right? We don't. That person might not even know what they were truly thinking, so let alone us trying to understand them. When we talk about um, not needing something, sometimes we'll hear also like elderly people or older people, if you will, say, um, I don't need to study. My time here is almost done. Right? Sometimes like I'm talking to my grandma and she'll be like, uh, no, I don't need it. Let's you know, let you young people do it. Someone else is going to do it for me. But again, that attitude of not needing, not having time, right, in the sense that they're not going to be here much longer, that's not the attitude as well. Because we do need it. We need it for our eternal souls. Our spirits are eternal. They're ageless. 
they're not going to age and that, con that knowledge, that information is going to be with us forever. It's never too late to start. It's never too early to start either, right, if we go like that. So again, there's always time, there's always the need to learn more. There's always the need to be on that pursuit of knowledge when it comes to understanding our lives, understanding ourselves, and understanding the world around us. The next one would be, I don't have the time. Right? We all juggle many different things. We're juggling family life, work, friends, all of those things. And we have them all up in the air. And time is limited, 24 hours a day, goes by really quickly. Now, what to do, right, when we say we don't have the time? Well, we can say that time is um, a matter of priority, right? You do what you think is most important to you. All of us here found the time to spend an hour, right, here studying about something new, studying about something or reviewing something we already knew. So we prioritize that time. Now, one thing that we can think about is switching the, oh, I have to, I have to do this, I have to do that, with the attitude, I want to, right? There are things we have to do, but if we switch our mindset to want to do them, the attitude will be a little different. And out of those things that we want to do, we need to take some time with the things that we must do. And when we talked about studying about ourselves, about our lives, about the world, that's going to be something we must do. We must find the time. Now, how much time are we really talking about, right? So let's think about this. I found an article that was talking about that if we read six pages of the codification of the five core books in Spiritism a day throughout the year, we would have time to read all five. Okay, if you spend six, if you read six pages each day of the year, like 365 days out of the year, you will have read all the five basic books in Spiritism. So you're going to have the Gospel According to Spiritism, the Spirits book, all of them, if you're spending that time. So how much time is that? Right? Okay, so Carolina, how much time is it going to be? The person who wrote the article said that it was 20 minutes a day. Okay, that he spent 20 minutes a day reading it. And if you do the math, it comes out to be four 24-hour days Okay, with a minute. So like you're going to spend four days out of the year, spread out, and you're going to have the understanding, you're going to have read them all at least once. Okay, and his idea was that every year we're going to try to do that. We're going to read, right? Reread, read again, because again, information is not just going to be about the reading, it's going to be based on the experiences we live. So it's a challenge, seems like a challenge, right? And again, I guess if you miss a day, the next day you read 40 minutes. I guess I'm assuming that some days he might not have had the time. But again, it's something for us to think about. And some of you guys might be willing to give it a try. The year has started. We're not on the 1st of January anymore. But again, you can go on a little bit further with that. There's, you don't have to start on the 1st of January. It could be any day of the year. It's going to take you 365 days from there to have read all of the books. So again, one idea. More opportunities to study, right? And again, we talked about can we not try to devote some time to the study of Kardec? 20 minutes a day doesn't seem like much, right? But if we keep putting it off, it's going to make a big difference in our lives. More opportunities to study. We have here, it's just a picture from the website, right? You guys are here on Sunday morning from 11 to 12. They also have it on Wednesdays. And we have the children's classes too, which is something that we're not necessarily going to talk about as much, but it is as important, if not more important, that we're educating the kids. And the kids also have access to these truths that we're talking about. If it's important to us, it's even more important to them because they have a head start, if you will, if they're starting from a younger age. So again, also on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7.30, you guys have an opportunity to come and spend an extra hour in addition to the 20 minutes you guys are reading daily to have some greater understanding of those things. And the United Spirits Council has plenty of resources. Okay. Um, if you're interested in reading the books but don't have a copy, you can have all the PDF files. They're free. All the books are here. They're readily available. Great opportunity to start the studies, to continue to pursue them. All of this information, again, readily available thanks to technology. And again, we just need to find that time, to prioritize that time so we can find opportunities to study more. I'll start tomorrow. 
right? A lot of people say, oh, I don't have the time today, but tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And we keep prolonging that process. Be on guard, Jesus already told us, like, be warned. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. We do not know when our time here on earth will end. We don't know when we're going to synchronize. We don't know when that time will be. So we need to be alert. We might not have tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. No one knows. So why not start today? If we're, plan if we're planning on cultivating a seed, if we're planning on harvesting the seeds of our knowledge and all those things, we need to plant them now. We need to plant them today to give it time to grow. Understanding is a process. It's not something you're going to go and like just get it in one day. If that was the case, we wouldn't need like 11, 12 years of schooling. The kids from school, they go to school from 4 to 24, if you will, sometimes. If knowledge and understanding was something quickly, something we just like instant, kids wouldn't have to go to school for that long. Again, it's a process that we need to be alert, we need to be on guard, because tomorrow might be too late. Now, to give us a little bit of consolation, right, if we haven't started on all the studies, if we haven't been as persistent in pursuing it, um, Chico Xavier has this wonderful quote that helps us put things into perspective. Maybe we haven't been so admin, we haven't really been pursuing our knowledge, but he tells us that. We can't go back and change that, right? So he says, nobody can go back and start a new beginning. We can't go back and change things that happened in the past. But anyone can start today and make a new ending. So what happened has happened. But we can all start something new today. We can all start a new path in our lives today. And when we look at the picture, um, some of you guys might not be able to see, but it's a jail door and the door has the key in it. Now, we have that key. We have that key with all the knowledge, with all the information, with all the things we talked about. We have the key to free ourselves. The key is there, but it's up to us to open the door. No one, is, no one can open that door for us. If we're not willing to go ahead and turn that and open the door to free ourselves, we're not going to be able to be free, right? Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So in order to be free, we need to be using that key. We need to be using that knowledge and that understanding to do it. So how can we learn the truth to free our physical bodies in some ways, our mind, and our eternal spirit? Okay, what are some of the things that we can do to free all of that? Because we can't forget about our material needs, we can't forget about our brains, we can't forget about the spirits, our spiritual self as well. So how can we do that? Now, our inner transformation is going to be the first thing. Okay, we're going to question our own conscience at the end of the day, and we're going to ask ourselves, have I done all the good I could do? Did I hurt anybody today? Right? All those things and that reflection that St. Tagustine invites us to in the Gospel, he always asks himself before he went to sleep three questions, right? Have I done all the good I could today? Does anyone have anything to complain about me? And if we stop to think about those things, have I wronged anyone today? And if we reflect on a daily basis, we'll be able to start that process of the inner transformation. We can't change what happened already, but we can start the next day with something fresh. Try to do better the next time. Um, we're also going to share some opportunities to learn when we talked about information about our lives here on earth, our material bodies, our mind, and our spirit. These are some apps that we have used that we're familiar with, and I'm sure there's plenty more. These are just some that um, some of you guys might be familiar, might be something new for you guys. They're all free, or they have a free version that you can try it out if you're interested to get some more information. In terms of our daily lives, one, um, one app one application on the smartphones will be focused on the family. It's a Christian radio station and they have daily um, programs like 20, 30 minutes long talking about daily lives. They talk about family lives, they talked about kids and schools. It's not um, spiritist, but it's Christian based. It's a wonderful opportunity to listen to different things, also get some different perspectives about the truth of the gospel. So again, one of the, and you can listen on your car, 
sure, easy, and again, a lot of insights. Another one when we talked about, just as an example, 5K runner, um, a lot of us want to have a more active life, want to start doing some exercises. This one walks you from like being able to run zero, right, zero kilometers, to being able to do 5K as a process. Again, all these things are not going to happen overnight. It takes eight weeks to go from running zero to running a 5K. But again, it is possible. And there are many other applications that we can look for to have a healthier lifestyle in terms of dieting, in terms of nutrition, and in terms of exercise. So many opportunities there. When we talk about our mind, educating our minds, we're like academically. Canvas Network, um, some of you guys are familiar, offers free online classes. These are classes taught by university professors on many different topics, many different subjects, all free. You enroll in the class online, you complete the assignments, and most of them will give you a certificate. Great opportunity. Again, a lot of them are low investment in terms of time, but you can get a lot out of it. The classes could range from three months to like six months. Some of them are a little bit shorter, but again, great opportunity at Canvas Network. TED Talks, um, great <laughs> podcasts of many different topics as well. And the nice thing about the application, you can search it by the time. So if you're looking for something that's five minutes, you can look in the things that are five minutes and they have longer talks as well. So if you only have five minutes today to enrich your mind, to enrich your um, brain with something interesting, with something inspiring, you can search for those five minutes. If you have a little extra time, you can look for those as well. And a lot of them will have translation in many different languages with the subtitles. So it makes it very accessible to a lot of people. Great resource. Um, Lumosity. It seems like you're playing games, but it's actually games that are supposed to keep your brain active. They've done a lot of research on how active our brains stay. So again, this will improve your concentration. It's going to improve our speed in terms of rational thinking, all of those things, and even like math games, different things. It's a great application that's going to help. It's very entertaining as well, and they recommend that you um, practice every day. It takes about 10-15 minutes a day to go through the exercises and you can track your progress. A great way to keep your brain active, to keep your mind active as well, and have fun while you're doing it. And when we talk about our spirit, many resources we already talked about. Uh, the internet is full of resources, the websites, the United States Council has many PDFs, but we have um, many others as well, but we have Card Deck Radio, okay, and on Saturdays they have the live shows about an hour long, some of them are a little bit shorter, with um, speakers from many different parts of the country, many different parts of the world, and they share that knowledge, and you can download the podcast. There's also a UVerse application for the Bible, and it's easier to read, it's easier to research, a couple of the things. It makes it more accessible for you to read and get the contents of the Gospel and some of the other books. So again, some of the resources we are familiar with, these are not all of them, they're available, but some of them that we can start thinking about. If we can devote a little bit of time each day, maybe on our commute, I don't know how long you guys commute for, but again, you, can, you might have time to listen to a TED Talk, to listen to one of the Focus on the Families, right? Um, the Canvas Networks, you kind of have to do some of the reading and some of the writing, so not ideal for that. But again, when we have the time, when we find that time, right? Because if we're waiting for it to have that time, it might not be available. When we make it a priority, we'll find ways to deal with it. Find ways to make it a priority. And when we come to concluding, our morning, we started talking about the importance of study, mainly the importance of studying Kardec. We talked about studying many different parts of our lives, but the focus always should be to come back to Kardec. So the Spirit Emmanuel, he said that it is necessary to study Kardec. So he starts over here with study. So he said it's important to study Kardec, it's important to annotate Kardec, it's important to meditate about his teachings, it's important to analyze, to comment, to in interpret, to cultivate, to teach, and to spread in that order. That's how he put it, in that order, okay? Now, we can see why, right? We're not going to begin studying and start spreading because we might spread things that are not necessarily true. So again, before we can start spreading, before we can start sharing, we need to be going through this process. We're never going to reach the point where we know it all, and hopefully we won't get to that point. And 
we're going to be going through as a process. We're going to be studying. And there will come a point when we start to cultivate that study, when something inside of us begins to change. And that will be the point where we can start, okay, let me start teaching others. We can start with that, start spreading, and start really getting to the realm of studying everything. When we talked about the learning pyramid um, in education and in development, human development as well, we see that only 5% of what we learn in a lecture is actually retained. Okay, so from today, right, probably 5% of what we talked about will be retained. Maybe 10%, right? If we did some of the reading with me and you guys are participating, we added some audio, um, not, well, audio and visual, so maybe 20%. Let's say at best, we're going to retain 20% of what we talked about this morning. And this is where most of our schooling or most of the educations and classes are going to stay at. Now, if we can participate in discussion groups and the demonstrations when you guys come to the smaller groups on, um, is it on Wednesdays, right? It's a smaller group on Wednesday with a discussion. We can probably retain about 50%. And that's why it's important to come to those and find the time as well so you can share, you can have conversations, you can ask questions, so we can retain a little bit more. But the bulk of the learning process is right here, right? Practice by doing, 75%. Teaching others, 90%. We're not going to retain 100% of everything we see. But that's why it's so important that our learning doesn't stop here. Our learning is not going to stop at just reading Kardec, right? Our learning can't stop there because otherwise we're going to be missing a lot of extra information. And when we look at this pyramid, it makes reincarnation seem such a blessing, right? What better way to learn than by doing it? And that's what we come here to do. Reincarnation is a learning process. So when we come and we're doing the thing, we're doing the hard work, that's where the learning is. That's where when we start teaching other people about the blessings of, that we have with spiritism, when we have with Christ and the gospel, then we're gonna really start living it. We're gonna start practicing in every day of our lives. So when we come back to that picture with Kardec and his teachings, that's why it's so important to study. And it's very important for us to reach that point where we can cultivate we can teach and we can spread because this is where the learning will be. All of this over here, we're going to retain very little of it. We're going to retain less than 50 or 50%. 50 when we get to the other parts of talking about it, not just the study process, we're really going to be learning, we're going to really be living it, and we're going to get to the point where we will get to know the truth. And that truth will make us truly free, will make our spirits truly free, and will make us have a much better understanding of ourselves, of the world, and everything else around us. Now, any questions? You guys have any questions?